Okay. All right. So welcome everyone to the second in our series of Lunch and Learn presentations. My name is Ronald Piasechny. I am the president of Niagara Pride. And we have a couple of great presenters today. Uh, we have uh, Sue Frawley and uh, we have um, Faith. I, I've, I'm going to apologize. I just blanked on Faith's last name. Uh, Sue, can you Faith chime in? Swift. Yes. Thank you. Uh, they will be presenting from GLIS uh, today, talking about GLIS's services and Marissa Sims from Kaleida's Youth Link program and Be Prepared. Um, so we'll be hearing about uh, those services that are for youth in the LGBTQ community. Um, today's presentation is going to be a little bit shorter than our regular lunch and learn. We're only going to be on for 30 minutes today. Uh, if individuals have questions, please throw your question into the chat uh, box or we don't have a lot of people on today uh, right now. So if uh, you feel comfortable, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask a question. Uh, to the presenter. Uh, we will make uh, any slides and handouts that the presenters have available uh, once we post the recording of today's session on our social media sites. Uh, so individuals will be able to download those as well if they have questions. And I also just want to take a quick moment just to recognize that, um, that, that earlier this week we lost a um, very um, important member of the LGBT community here in Western New York, uh, Rodney Hensel. He was an activist uh, in the LGBT community, uh, going as far back as uh, being one of the founding members of the Manichene Society when that was here, um, instrumental in the founding of the local Stonewall Democrats, as well as Silver Pride. Um, so just to take a moment and just kind of um, pay homage and our respects to Rodney and the significant loss to the community in his passing. So just a quick 10 seconds of silence for that. Okay. And so, um, since we're still waiting for Faith to come on the line, I'm going to uh, ask Marissa to start us off and to talk about uh, her programs and uh, talk about Kaleida's Youth Link program and the Be Prepared services. Take it away. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for having me here and asking, um, and inviting me to be able to be here to be able to present and talk about our programs. So my position, um, I'm the community health specialist for a subcontract that's through Harvest House located here in Buffalo and Kaleida Health Youth Link and Be Prepared programs. While both um, agencies are located in Buffalo, we do service all of Western New York. So that doesn't mean that anyone from any of the other eight counties cannot come in for our services. So um, I'd like to talk a little bit about both programs. Uh, I'll start with Harvest House first. So Harvest House is, um, Harvest House Ministries is on Jefferson Street, 175 Jefferson Street. We have Good Neighbors Healthcare and Good Neighbors Dental, which Dental is open today. They just started having Saturday clinics, which is really awesome. Um, they've been seeing a lot of people coming in from the community, especially those um, who are migrating to um, America. So we're able to provide services to them. Both primary care and dental right now are free of service. Um, individuals can come in who may not have insurance or may be overinsured. Uh, to receive services. The dental is very low level. They do have some oral surgery, um, but nothing like braces or anything like that, just really kind of like extractions. And then we have baby and children's, which is also open today as well. Right now, because of the pandemic, they're just doing curbside um, pickups. But if an individual or a family has any needs for baby and children's clothing, they're able to, um, they can come to me, they can contact me, or they can contact you all, um, any, kind of community provider can fill out a referral form for them and then they just uh, send that information to uh, baby and children's and then they can come and pick up the items and also um, the mom who's pregnant uh, 60 days before she's delivering she can come in and get items for a baby and get ready for um, the arrival of her of the baby and then we also have new hope education center which I'm in right now, I'm in our conference room. I uh, switched rooms from earlier. 
Um, we have classes here through our partners from Buffalo Public Schools Adult Education and Erie 2 BOCES. Uh, Erie 2 BOCES provides LPN, CNA, and PCA phlebotomy, and then they were trying to do a health information class that didn't get started up because of the pandemic. Things kind of um, took kind of like a, 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 a stop right now. Um, they are looking for people to sign up for phlebotomy. So if anyone's interested in that class and uh, getting that training, we are looking to fill that class. Uh, our LPN program is going on right now. Our next one will start in July. That is a year long program. And then uh, we just had a PCA uh, training, which they'll be graduating pretty soon. And then we have classes, excuse me, we have classes through Buffalo Public Schools Adult Education. Um, they haven't been on site. Uh, most of their classes are uh, online. But uh, before the pandemic, they were on site. They had construction, steam engineering, hands on uh, skills, computer skills, electrical, residential electrical, and plumbing was at this site. There are several uh, sites throughout um, Buffalo for adult education, for Buffalo Public Schools adult education. And so if you have anyone who is interested in any of those classes, they can contact me. Um, I did send my, like a little PowerPoint with my email address. Um, it's msims, S-I-M-S, at harvesthousebuffalo.org. You can reach out to me and I will get you connected to any service here at Harvest House. Or if anybody has any questions or like to come down to do a tour, I can also do a tour. Um, we just, you know, have to take your temperature and we ask that people wear masks. And then, so Kaleida Health Youth Link Program and Be Prepared Programs, we're located at 1050 Niagara Street. We're located within Niagara Street Pediatrics, which has several other different um, specialties. So they have primary care for individuals up to age 21, from birth to 21. Then they have special needs clinic and asthma clinic. And then they have our program, which we all uh, work with individuals in the LGBTQ community, uh, providing sexual health services. We also provide HIV primary care for individuals up to age 25. So the Youth Link and Be Prepared programs, we have uh, kind of a special program where we can see individuals up to age 25. Our providers have gotten um, like a special okay to be able to still prescribe and see individuals because we recognize that sometimes because somebody is 21, they may not be ready for adult services. And we provide a lot of soft handoff um, and hands-on skills for individuals. So we provide HIV primary care. We also provide uh, STI and HIV testing and screening and treatment. We also provide PrEP and PEP services. And we also provide family planning and also transitioning services. So for anyone who may be transitioning, we also provide services for them as well. We are looking to provide um, hormone replacement hormone replacement therapy right now we are not but we are looking to be able to for our providers to be able to do that so we're really excited about that um right now there's just endocrine and um evergreen that is providing those services but we do have some uh nurses who are able to provide the puberty blockers um which is really exciting um we just recently had someone who was scheduled unfortunately because of the snowstorm last week there uh medication got hold, held up in Pittsburgh or Pennsylvania somewhere. So um, that wasn't able to happen yet, but we're very excited about these services that we can provide. So it could kind of be like a one-stop shop for people and you're not having to go from here to there to this place to that place. You can kind of go in one place and be able to provide and get a lot of services. We also work with individuals who may be experiencing homelessness, substance use or mental health um, issues. And so we have a mental health a specialist on site um, who comes from Kaleida Health Child Psych Center. Um, they're there one day a week and they're providing assessments and referrals out in the community if they feel that the individual may need more services. So we do try to have like a multidisciplinary team to be able to provide services for individuals within our program. Um, I specifically work with the Be Prepared program for individuals for um, who may be interested in PrEP or PEP, and also those who may be interested in transitioning and looking for services for them within the community and also helping them with any kind of case management services. A lot of the work that I do is kind of not in the clinic, is really kind of getting people to feel comfortable to come in, um, 
if they have any issues that is any barriers kind of bringing them in, we do provide transition uh, transportation services where I'm picking that person up sometimes and want to get them from their house to bring them to their appointment because uh, we recognize that youth and young adults, they don't have a lot of resources. And so um, we want them to be able to make their appointments and get the services. So we do provide some of those services that sometimes um, the youth may not have, um, which right now a lot of our youth are working and do have cars, which is really great. When I was 16 and 17, I didn't have a car. Um, so I would have been very happy for somebody to come pick me up and uh, bring me to my appointment. Um, those are the services we provide. I can go a little bit into um, prep and PEP if you like. Um, I'm not sure if you would like to. Um, I did have a question um, with regards to the PrEP program, um, because I, I know that that's something that in the LGBT community, that's um, there's a lot of interest in that. And in terms of providers, um, can you just let us know in terms of the, the youth component, like how young um, can somebody be to, to uh, get linked up? Do they, um, like kind of what is that process if they were interested in uh, either like, um, birth control or some type of um, like prep services, like what what ages can people start accessing those through your program? For our program, we see individuals um, at starting at age 13. That's not to say that we haven't any, have had not had anyone younger. Um, we have had um, some individuals who are 12 and 11 coming to our program. Um, however, we don't see a lot of like 11 to 12 year olds coming to our program and not a lot of 13 year olds either. We typically see a lot of 15 and up, but that's not to say that our providers will not provide um, the services to them. So they are able to prescribe for um, those individuals if they uh, have the medical needs. So sometimes on the back end, we have to do like prior all, uh, authorizations and our providers have to provide an explanation on why this is important. And they're very good in being able to get the individual, the services that they need. So if they're requesting for birth control and they're 12 or 11, they're able to get that service for them where there is no issue. Um, right now in New York State, there's minors rights. So anybody that's age 13 and older can consent to any services that's under the umbrella of sexual health, which includes HIV treatment and HIV testing and um, STI screening. So we don't have any issues where parents can say, oh, my child can't receive these services. We always ask our patients when they come in, especially if they don't um, have their parent with them when they come into appointment, what their support looks like. Um, and there's, you know, there's a mix. Some, some have supportive families and some don't, right? Um, we always are happy when they do have a supportive family because then we can bring their family in and talk about what that looks like and being able to talk to their parents about the services that they're um, receiving. I don't know if that answered your question. It does. Thank you so okay. much. Because I, I think that's just good to have individuals know that um, in terms of like what age ranges, um, people can start accessing your services. So I think that's really important to, to have that info out there. So uh, the person who was providing a TV blocker, um, they, I believe, are 12 or 13. They're, they're really young. They're not someone who I'm working with one-on-one. Um, -on -one. Um, I'm just a little bit aware of just hearing from um, sometimes when phone calls are being made because we all sit in the same office, but they're, I believe like 12 or 13, but they have someone who's supportive and their, their parents are aware of what's going on. So they also have that support um, as well so that they don't have um, where we have to kind of like figure out, oh my goodness, how are we gonna be able to do this and be able to give that person what, what they want? You know, we wanna make sure that we support our, our young people in, in the decisions that they are making for themselves. Exactly. So no, thank you. Thank you so much, Marissa. Um, I'm going to um, move next to um, Sue and Faith from Gliss so that um, Gliss has a, uh, an opportunity to present as well. Um, and if there's any questions then with regards to Gliss or the programs Marissa mentioned, we can do um, questions uh, after that as well. So. Uh, take it away, Sue and Faith. Thanks, Ron. And thank you to Niagara Pride for having us here. And since I am usually with Niagara Pride, 
I want to let my colleague, uh, Faith, uh, do a little bit of talking. I think she also, do you have the slides? Are we doing those today, Faith? I do have them if we want to share them. No, you know, well, we don't have, I mean, it's either, we, we were talking about what we were going to be presenting. Um, but let me let Faith tell you a little bit about our youth leadership and some of the programs we're doing with youth. And then I can talk a little bit about our, our education, restorative justice, and our reach out to families. Yeah, so we've recently identified ourselves as a subchapter of GLSEN. So in order to meet those guidelines, we have also taken on their national um, SHINE leadership program, which essentially is a group of identified youth who want to put their activism into good use in an organization or in their schools in some context. But we're really taking it as having these youth be a crucial part in GLSEN's programming objectives. So we are an organization that services youth, but having the SHINE program really helps our youth be in the core of our planning. So they're going to help us determine what kind of programs they'd like to see, what type of topics they'd like to talk about. They are going to be able to tell us what their lives are like at school. We have different youths from different backgrounds, different areas applying for positions in our SHINE program. So a rural school experience is very different than like an urban school experience. So we'll be able to hear on the forefront what kind of changes they need in their school, what sorts of initiatives they want to take in their activism. So the SHINE program really is an opportunity for us to help them develop leadership skills. It's not only them helping us, but us helping them further their future careers and having leadership skills is really going to be something that's going to further them in the path they choose to take after high school, whether it be um traditional college or going into the workforce or whatever it may be, leadership skills are going to help them. So developing those leadership skills while also validating and accepting their identities is going to help them realize that who they are is not something they need to hide when going into adult life. It's something, it's their biggest strength. It's their best attributes. So we're really trying to put a focus on having them not only accept themselves, but making sure that when they go out into the future, that those characteristics of their identity are something that are gonna be their strongest selling points for their future selves. So that's the SHINE program. We work really heavily also doing several different trainings for schools, other organizations coming and doing talks like this. We're really heavily pushing out cultural competency for the LGBTQ community. And we do um, GLSEN safe space trainings for schools and other organizations, which essentially is just helping organizations and schools be the best allies they can be for these students, not necessarily being the most knowledgeable or the most understanding or being completely up to date with this community because it is a constantly changing community, which is one of the best things about it, but helping them realize that there are very small steps and initiatives they can take to help these students feel safe no matter where they are. So that's a little bit about those. I could go further into our other programs like Drop-In Center and all that, but I think Sue's going to take like the parent community aspect. Yep, thanks. Um, and we can talk about those too. I mean, some right. of those things people know about, um, but I think it's the new things that Gliss is doing. I always joke and say, this ain't your mama's Gliss. Um, Gliss came about in the 1980s at the uh, you know height, um, the, or the beginning, I should say, of the HIV and AIDS uh, pandemic. And there were so many homeless youth or youth that were turning into, um, jobs that put them at risk sexually, health-wise. So that is still a large mission of GLSS, is to always work at preventing homelessness. But as GLSS is evolving, we are also doing services to reach out to families and or adult caretakers and to provide supportive services. We have a uh, support group for parents of transgender youth. We have a support group for LGBTQ youth parents. We are also doing uh, extended outreach. In fact, I'm very happy to tell you that we got a uh, grant award to extend our services out to Lockport. And on March 19th, we're gonna be at the Lockkeeper Cafe from six to seven. And Ron, I hope Niagara Pride and some people can come out because this is not Lockkeeper's normal time, but they are opening up so that we can start to extend out. And that's a big part of uh, what we're looking at. Where are people underserved? And so while we've had a strong uh, presence in the city, we are looking at north towns, south towns, uh, moving further east down the thruway. Where are their people, parents, communities? Additionally, 
we have trained facilitators now who can do restorative circles, reparative justice circles and practices. And we are reaching out to schools with great success. We are now extending that into the court system. And we've just started our dialogues with the probation intake. And we hope to be offering that as well for young people where uh, dealing with LGBTQ issues, which may have been part of their uh, alleged crime or aggression, or LGBTQ individuals where uh, family uh, relationships may be part of uh, the issue as well. Uh, we continue to do services to youth who are in care, such as like with CPC or other youth facilities. And we're still continuing to reach uh, looking at, you know, where is the need? Um, what can we do? We also are in talks. Uh, it was wonderful to listen to you, Marissa, and I have questions for you. I'm going to stop talking in a second because we're always looking at places for who is giving service to, especially our transgender youth, and where can they access services, and especially uh, the hormone blockers and all the rest. Um, I think the biggest thing is, you know, we're always looking for counseling. Uh, which is really hard to find for young people. We do not offer counseling, we offer supportive services. But one of the things we're really trying to do is connect with other agencies and services and form sort of a, you know, collaborative coalition of sorts. Uh, there's enough work for everybody and we're all doing really important things. And when we talk with each other and find out that somebody's doing something, that helps all of our clients, our youth and our families. So, that's a little bit about the uh, more adult side of GLIS. Um, and who knows where we're going to still continue to keep evolving to as we go on. So, um, and we do have a drop in center, as Faith was just mentioning. Uh, we, it always was in person. We're virtual, just like everybody else. We're watching the health uh, directives. We hope to be in person when it is safe. The same with um, hopefully being in person for our transgender youth. Uh, drop in as well as for our supportive. But right now everything's virtual and it can all be found on our website, which I think is glyswny.org. And my wonderful colleague Faith is going to probably put it in our chat because she is the tech guru. Uh, but that is it. That's um, so if there's any questions for anybody else, but as I said, I want to ask Marissa a question. So. <laughs> Thank you. I also want to say that um, we follow um, Gliss on Instagram um, and also Niagara Pride as well. Um, that's how I found um, Ron. <laughs> um, and seeing the, the drop-in center for um, individuals who are trans, is uh, that really um, speaks out to me. Um, a lot of our um, um, trans females that we have have so much going on and sometimes you know you meet with someone and you hear their story and you go home and you're still thinking about did I do everything I was supposed to do did I find everything for them that I was supposed to find and I think that having those support groups is really helpful um, for individuals while I may be someone who individuals look at as an ally and support I'm not walking that same walk and so having um, a group of famili familiarity um, I think that that's awesome. Yeah, I'd agree. I'm sorry, I didn't know what um what question you had for me. Oh no, um, so my my question was about you were talking about your services, and I did not know that uh, that was an access point for uh, young people for the hormone blockers and as well. Do you have any type of case management or counseling that also goes along with that, or is it simply more of a, a medical intervention for the young people? A medical intervention, um, both me and um, the person who works um, with some of the individuals. So I mainly work with individuals who um, are on PrEP. And so they, they stated that they are interested and, they are, and they're taking it every day. Um, we know that adherence is um, a big conversation. That's another topic for another day for individuals. And so both me and the person who works in the Youth Link program, um, both have um, come from school social work, both have masters in social work. So we do provide that like that kind of entry level case management is not a billable service that we're doing, um, but we do have uh, Dr. Crawford who is providing assessments and um, for, especially if we have someone who we feel may benefit from counseling. And if you think that um, us, if referring someone to us to get them into um, the child psych center 
we definitely can make that connection. Definitely please reach out to me and I can definitely get that person connected and on our schedule. Or even just talking to that individual. Um, Cause a lot of work that we do, sometimes I I'm end up talking to people for six months before they even uh, get to a point where they're ready to schedule an appointment to come in. And, and we know that, that, that we have to do that. We know that we have to build um, that rapport with people. Like when I always meet people, I always say, you know, you don't know me from Adam's house cat. And I completely understand that, you know, and we're going to walk this walk together, you know, ask me any questions. And I hope I make that person feel comfortable um, to be able to be open and honest with us. So um, I'm sorry. I, I go on tangents. I'm so sorry. I don't know if I answered your question. You, you absolutely answered my question. And I have a hunch we'll be talking more. And that's why I love these lunch and learns as I was telling Ron. Every time I come, I learn something about another organization that I didn't know, and I'm able to give, you know, referrals and information. So I'm loving it. And thank you, Marissa. And I think we will be talking in the future about our common uh, areas of service. Yes, I'm putting in my um, email address and also my um, cell, this cell number can also be given out to anybody in the community. Um, it's my, my work cell. So I have it with me um, pretty much. I have it with me all day, every day. Um, and I take it home with me. So this also can be given out to people that you may think may benefit from some of our services here, even if it's at Harvest House as well. I'm not well. a fast typer. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. Um, no, I, I'm absolutely uh, ecstatic over the fact that um, exactly like Sue said, the, uh, the these lunch and learns can serve as a way of different agencies discovering one another and the services that are out there. So this level of networking, I think, is super important. And I'm glad that um, agencies are taking advantage of, of that as well, as well as spreading the information uh, about the, um, the different programs. So that is, uh, that's good to hear. Um, unless there are some other questions, I'm just going to quickly touch on uh, the upcoming Niagara Pride Lunch and Learn, as well as uh, some other events that we have coming up. So our next Lunch and Learn is March 19th. Um, and that is again from 12 to one. It's, uh, we have speakers coming in from the Pride Center of Western New York, uh, Heart, Love and Soul, which is a, uh, an agency that works with uh, homeless individuals, um, and families, uh, as well as does uh, like um, like a food bank and, and some other work. Uh, we have Horizon Health Services. They'll be presenting as well. And Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, will be presenting on health insurance information. So that is our next Lunch and Learn. But on top of that, I'm happy to announce that we have three additional uh, programs that will be happening. Uh, we have a presentation scheduled for April 9th from uh, also from 12 to 1. Uh, the April 9th is the Western Problem Gambling Resource. Um, they are an, uh, an, an organization that uh, works on educating um, the community as well as other providers about what is problem gambling. Uh, we will be working with them to do two trainings. Uh, the first one, again, is on April 9th from 12 to 1. That is going to be basically what is Problem Gambling 101. And the exciting part about that is that if you have mental health clinicians or um, KSACs or addictions counselors that are part of your staff, um, that training will be able to provide free OASIS CEUs for clinicians. So uh, definitely be on the lookout for that. Look at our Niagara Pride page. We'll have a link as to how to pre-register for that. Um, then on March 12th, uh, so that is coming up pretty soon, but on March 12th from 12 to 1 p.m., the SNAP Ed and Cornell Cooperative Extension are going to be doing a virtual healthy eating on a budget training. So that is open to anyone in the community, um, especially individuals who right now, either because of the pandemic or uh, just in general, um, could use information with regards to how to eat healthy while, uh, again, budgeting uh, for it, uh, because we know that healthy eating can be expensive sometimes. So they're going to be giving a presentation on how to do that again, healthy eating on a budget, and that is March 12th. And then we are also doing a presentation in May 
Um, just want to scroll through here. Um, I apologize for the, where is the May presentation? Oh, uh, the May presentation will be Budgeting 101, and that is May 14th from 12 to 1 p.m., and that is being presented by m and Bank. Uh, we are partnering with them uh, to talk about, uh, again, financial health and financial responsibility. So we're gonna be doing a Budgeting 101 presentation open to anyone in the community. And again, that is May 14th from 12 to one. So as we get new trainings and new partners wanting to work with us to provide additional uh, trainings and information sessions like this, uh, please feel free to reach out to myself. You can contact us at info, I-N-F-O at niagarapride.org, email us, let us know that you're interested in doing a presentation with us and we will work with you to get you on our schedule and to do this kind of Zoom uh, presentation style. And if there are no other questions, I don't see any hands raised and I don't see any um, individuals uh, looking like they have questions. There's nothing in the chat. I'm going to wrap up uh, today's session of the Lunch and Learn. I wanna thank Marissa Sims for coming and representing Harvest House, uh, Be Prepared, uh, Youth Link. Uh, I feel like I'm missing one. <laughs> you, you represent a lot. So uh, yeah, thank you awesome. for, so thank you for uh, providing us all that great information about your programs. And then Sue Frawley and Faith Winship for uh, coming from Gliss and talking about Gliss's services. Um, so thank you again. And we look forward to next month's Lunch and Learn, it is the third Friday of every month from 12 to 1, so March 19th. See you there.